Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to know how to dream. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to call you Abba Father. Thank you for being Emmanuel, God, with us. Thank you for your word, which is true. When you say heaven and earth will pass away, but you say your word will stand forever. You stand uh, uh, waiting for an opportunity to perform your blessings. And you stand waiting for to hear from us when you can perform the miracles of heaven in all our situations. Now, Lord God, I yield to the Holy Spirit. I decrease that you will increase. As I hide behind this sacred desk, they will hear from heaven. I praise you. I honor you. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable, thy sight and thy strength, my redeemer. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Again, we're continuing on with the month of God chasers. Yes. I told you I'm after something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I'm after something. Amen. Like I said last week, I almost, I almost got it. I almost got it. But today I want to use this for a thought. Uh, no bread in the house. In the house of bread. Let me say that again. No bread in the house of bread. And you're going to say, this is what you see here that Ruth dealt with. She was going through some things. Yeah. And I think we all go through some things. But we need to understand how to handle yes. when we go through some things. Because yes. yes. there is a way to handle certain things yes. when things go off. <laughs> you know, everything is going good. You, you, you're driving down the street, your car's going fine, and, and next thing you know, the, a light comes on. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh no, what am I going to do? Because this light then came on. I got to get to this appointment, I got to get to the office. I got to get to this hospital. I am on a journey. And I'm in this car. The car passed inspection. I got enough gas in my car. I know I have enough oil in the car. I got the tire pressure. But then all of a sudden, a light comes on. and says, engine problem. What go? What do you do? When you run up against these obstacles in your life, yeah. when everything is going well, and then all of a sudden, something just comes right in front of you and makes you have to start thinking about some different things. How are you going to deal with this? Are you going to continue to go on? Are you going to pull to the side? Are you going to call for assistance? Many things go on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I want to briefly talk for you today about there's no bread in the house of bread. Now, when I'm saying the house of bread, that's church. Bethel was, means the house of bread. And, 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 and there is a situation that's happening in the church of America today. I said it before and I'll say it again today. The church services has got too traumatic. We, we, we come in, we pick up the bulletins, then, then we, we put our brains in autopilot. The priority of the presence of God is lost in the modern church. We don't come in looking for the power of God. We don't come in looking for the anointing. We don't come in looking and realizing that today might be the day I get my breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Today may be the day get the answer to my prayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Today might be the day that the shackles that have been holding me down <laughs> get removed. Yeah. If you will, please, please indulge me 
as I make an analogy. Now, this is me making an analogy. It's not biblical, but it is true. Okay. The modern church of the day is like the bakery that are open. You know, they're open, but there's no bread to sell. Furthermore, we, we, we don't have an interest ourselves in selling any bread. It's just like we come to chit chat in a cold oven. There's no fresh bread. We come in and talk about this. We come in and talk about that. And, and we nibble at these crumbs and we talk about the yesteryears and we talk about God. Uh, 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 in the old, and we talk about what he did then, but we don't talk about what God does now. We're not talking about what he's doing now. Now mm -hmm. is a time that we need to talk about. And because of that, people are sick and tired of making programs and weariness of the spirituality yet real. And that's why we have problems getting people in the house of God. It's because they're looking for a power. They're looking for a change in aging. They're looking for something different. And when they get there, they don't feel it. And that's why they're paying more money to go to psychiatrists, psychics, and everything else. And they're putting all their energy and going to all these conferences. And they would want somebody to go to a conference and lay hands on them. But they don't even know them. Mm -hmm. And they come out, coming in there talking about, you know, give me five. You know, the Lord's going to give you this money. And they're going to say, you don't even know who this person is. And they're coming. And then they're asking you for all this money. And you're giving it to them. And you never see them again. Going to all these conferences. You know, sometimes we can get it to, 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 a, to a habit. But spending so much time in the conference that we don't spend time with God. And so people want bread. They want the little word. Yes. And where are they going to find it? They should find it in the house of God. So I'm after something. I'm chasing God. Number one, I want I want. I want number one. My first point is people want bread. They want the word. They really do. Look at verse, look, look, look at verse one. Mm -hmm. And now it came to pass in the day when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. Mm -hmm. And a certain man of Bethany, Jonah, went sojourned to the city of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. So in other words, this famine was going after something, right? Mm -hmm. His family was going somewhere. Mm -hmm. And they was in a family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it didn't stop them from going where they was going. Because remember, this this Ruth comes right after Judges. And remember in Judges, Judges says, uh oh, my wife loves this. I love this. When, 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 when there was no king, they, 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 they thought, they did what they thought was right in their own eyes, in their own mind. When there was no king. And now you get that was the end of Judges, and now you're in there with Ruth. And thank God for Ruth, because Ruth is in the lineage. Ruth, Ruth is in the lineage of, 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 of Jesus. Yes. Yes. So she's important. Mm -hmm. She is everybody's important, but she's really important. Mm -hmm. But here it is, it's a famine. And Lord knows we're in a famine. But this whole family went through in a time of a famine. And they went through. And they still was seeking something. And they was after the bread, which is they was after God. And 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 and, and, and so the Bethel was the house of bread. Or Bethlehem. Amen. And the church is Bethlehem. Yes. But why are people leaving? Why is it so hard first to get them in the house? And then why is it so hard to keep them in the house? 
to get them in the house, and then they leave the house. And why is it so important when they say, well, I can't come here, but I'm going to go somewhere else? Well, it's the same gospel. It's the same word. There is no such thing as a perfect church. So we need to get that out of our vocabulary. It doesn't exist. Because if you say it's a perfect church, as soon as you walk in, it became imperfect. Because yes. we're all imperfect. We all have a flaw. All of us have a flaw. Romans says there's no righteousness. No, not one. But he still wants us to not forsake the assembly of God. Put into it to his presence. Yes. Yes. That's why we need to understand. When the Lord told me when we was coming here, I remember we used to come to that door, and I was like, wait a minute, we're not going to biblical. Because that we're missing the element. There's three. Right. The outer, the inner, and the holies of holy. Yep. So that's why we change our entrance. That's the rest of you. If you got to do any chit chat, if you got to do all that murmuring, all that doing in the rest of you. But when you come into the sanctuary, the holy of holies, you should only be looking to hear from God or praying and worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. You don't believe the seriousness of it when these Levite priests had to go in once a year. They would go in and when their turn was, they had a rope and they put that rope around their waist and they had a bell. You know the reason that they had a bell? The reason they had a bell is if they wasn't right when they went in the holy of holies, they passed out and they heard that bell, that means that they was gone. The rope was, pull them out. The next one in line, take the rope, put the belt, and go in. The holy of holies. And that was only for the Levites. And it was to represent the sins of all of us. And when we come in, we need to understand something. When we come in, we need to make sure that we're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a certain way to come into the church. We need to make sure we come in the right way. Yeah. I was reading where there was a service that they were having and the pastor came up and the Holy Spirit told this pastor to only read 1 Chronicles 7 and 14. We all know what that is. He got up there and he said everything else but that. He got up to the pulpit and because he was disobedient, he got knocked back 10 feet. Laid flat out. Because the Holy Spirit told him what he was supposed to do and he didn't do it and he was disobedient and he got laid out. Got to understand the seriousness of this word. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So we got to understand that we need this bread. Amen. No bread in the house of bread. Number two, we have the bread. We have the bread. It's in John 6. Let me read it to you. You can turn if you want. John 6, verse 30. Starts at verse 30. says, And they say it. it Therefore to him, what sign showeth thou then that we might see and believe thee, but does work? Our father did eat man in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. 32. Then Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. And the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then say they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. That's right. He that come to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never 
thirst. That's why we need to come after Jesus. And you need to chase him. Because he is the bread of life. Listen, you got a problem? It's good that you talk to me. But you need to talk to Jesus. You, you got a struggle? It's good that we get in the struggle together. But you need to include Jesus in your struggle. He says that you put the bread and you'll never thirst. Which means that you'll never go without. He will always be there. That's right. But we, you know what? We don't let it flow. We stop it. Mm-hmm. It's like we, for whatever reason, I don't know, why have we lost the concept of money? It's not money, it's currency. And we don't let it flow. We stop it. You get ours. You get yours. But wait a minute. That hundred dollars just served me. Now let me pass that hundred dollars to you so it can serve you. But if I don't, we stop the flow. We get ours. You get yours. You figure it out. I had to figure that. You figured out stuff flowing. That's another story. Amen. Uh, 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 listen, number, uh, another point. It's too much man. Not enough God. Man can do this. Man can do that. Man can say this. Man can say that. Did not mention God at all. How will it flow in our country if it can't flow in our church? It must start in the church, the house of faith, the house of Bethel. If we're not going to show people the bread of life, we can't blame. We can't blame nobody for them not coming. If we don't explain what God has done for us, if we don't tell somebody the the blessing that God has done for us, if we don't tell the blessing that God has done to give us life. Mm -hmm. And more abundantly, if we don't tell anybody how God has got us out of the hospital, if we don't tell nobody how we got our degree, if we don't tell nobody how our children were successful by the grace of God, who's going to tell them? And then you wonder why you got nobody in front of you. Why you have nobody behind you? Why you have nobody beside you? Because you didn't tell nobody about the same God that got you through your struggles. And you're still going through a struggle. And if you're not, give God praise. But I guarantee you, blink your eyes and I guarantee you something's going to come up. So don't get comfortable. When we decide to share the true bread, people will come. People will come to the church when we are real about presenting the gospel. Think about this. What were you doing? What were you doing when that person presented the gospel to you? Did you have a joint in that hand? Yeah. Were you at the club? Yeah. Did you did you have something, a bottle in your hand? Maybe you had a bottle and a joint. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you didn't have none of that. But they still said, baby, you need to come with me. Where we going? It don't matter where we're going. But where I'm taking you, you're not going to be the same. But come. But come. Sometimes we have to take them by the hand. That's true. Sometimes we got to go out of our way. We got to be uncomfortable so they can be comfortable. Yes. 
See, we want everything where it's comfortable. Right. Mm -hmm. We want everything where it's good weather. Mm -hmm. I got a full tank of gas, and, and, and I got money in my pocket. Yeah. And now I'm going to come by and I'm going to tell you, this is what I can do for you. Well, you're not doing nothing anyway. Because mm -hmm. it wasn't that, nothing that you did. It was the grace of God that got you where you are. Yeah. But you need to be able to tell them, I got a quarter of a tank and I got $20 left in my pocket and I got 50 in my checking account. I still got four or five bills on the table, but I'm going to still come out and I'm going to still help you. Mm. And I'm going to tell you, I don't have nothing. I'm going to tell you I'm struggling, but I'm going to tell you I'm also going to a place that can give me help. And if not, I'm still going to give you praise. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have that what if not faith. Yeah. What if you don't bless me again? What if he don't help me again? If he don't give me what I need, I'm still going to give him praise. Yeah. I'm at all, oh, but if not, if you don't bless me today, I'm still going to give you the glory. I'm still going to give you the honor. I'm still going to raise my hand and yield to you. Even if you don't bless me no more, thank you for everything that you gave me right now. Thank you. Yes. It's good enough for me. And I'm not going to complain. That's right. I'm going to be graceful because a hurricane can come my way and take everything. Yeah. Just like it did some families in the states yeah. down south. Yeah. But I still got to have one. If not. If not. I still got to say you're worthy to be praised. Yeah. You are worthy, worthy. worthy to be praised. Yes. Let me close. <sighs> Naomi and her husband had two sons. Mm -hmm. They left the home and they moved to Moab. Mm -hmm. And it had a pace and they went to a place that was family. Normally when you move, <laughs> the, when, you, when you move, you want to move on up. <laughs> you look at move on up. Or, you're not looking to stay where you are. You're not looking to go down. They moving in a famine situation. They moving when it's not a right time to be moving. Sometimes we got to move when we're uncomfortable. Sometimes we got to move where everything don't line up. But we still got to move. Here it is. That we see some things happening. First of all, they move, and then I'm being real quick. I think she lost her husband. Mm -hmm. And then later on, in the same family land, she lost her sons. Yeah. Yeah. But she still had their wives. Yes. She still had to take care of them. Right, right. They just they deserve to be taken care of just as well. I'm moving real fast. <laughs> but Ruth, she, she did this. So know me. When we said, God, good God, was I, oh God, it was that time, it was that. But, but that's why we need the house of bread. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need the house of bread because there's bread in the house. Yes. Why people leave the church? Thank you for asking. There's no bread hmm. in a house. That's why. That's why. <laughs> Wait. People flock to the bars, yeah. to the club, mm -hmm. to the psychics. Mm -hmm. They'll try to just survive. You know why? The church fell. Well. Because we didn't meet their needs. And one thing the church has to do is you have to challenge them. You have to challenge them. And some people just don't want to be challenged anyway. But you still got to challenge them. Because they got to know what they're made of. And the only way you're going to find out who you really are is to be challenged. Right. I said before, you want to find out who the real person is? You want to find out who you really are? 
get the pressure. Get, get some pressure. I'm talking about some pressure. Some things come before you that you know you didn't create. Some things that came before you that you created. Some things that put you up against a wall and try and figure out what it is. The real you will show up yep. every time. Every time. And the way you respond, that's who you are. So you can't get that if you're not pressured. Because you figure out a way how to get around it. Where is the fear of God in the church? You remember years ago when people walked by the church and they smoked? They put that cigarette out. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh -huh. They kept going. They respected and they feared the church. Mm -hmm. They had that bottle in their hand. They walked by that church. They put that bottle down mm -hmm. and they walked by because they feared the church. Mm -hmm. Now you go on church parking lot. You can find beer cans, you can find alcohol bottles, you can find cigarette butts, you can find all that in the parking lot because they don't fear God. No reference of him. But this is the house of bread. This is where you need to be. There's no emptiness here. You will get filled with what you need. And so, I want you to realize something. We've got to get the hunger back. I don't know how, but we've got to get the hunger back. The news will break. When they find out that you are hungry and thirst after righteousness, they will hear about the news and they will want to come to where you are to figure out what's going on. If you show them that you're hungry, people will come and bring themselves back to the church and they will get healed. This picture right here of what Ruth was talking about was a picture of the unchurched and the unsaved. It was about helping Naomi say, I hear that there's prayer here and that we're going wherever you go, I'll go. Your people will be my people and God, your God will be my God. That's really what she's saying here. I know your husband's gone, your two children's are gone. Uh, we're going to take everybody with us. All right, we're going to go. And then verse 5 says, and then the children, the two children died. Both of them died, but their wives are still with them. And then verse 6, it says, and she rose with her daughters in law, and she came, and she returned from the country of Moab, the land of Shannon, where she heard the country of Moab. Amen. How that the Lord had visited his people and given them when they hear from God. Because you're hungry and thirst after righteousness, you don't come back to the house of God. Yeah. She basically said, she told me, she instructed Naomi and her daughter laws stay with me. Stay with me. So, choose your friends wisely. Mm -hmm. Don't let them choose you. No house and the bread. God bless you. May have a small upon you. As you understand. Like they said, your people shall be my people. That's it. That's it. Yep. And you trust and believe in the Lord. Yep. 
Yes, yes, yes. But we've got to bring the reverence back into the house. Mm -hmm. Some way, somehow. 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 Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. Today. I, I know for a fact that uh, a lot of people are seeking after things. And, and a lot of people are trying different things. A lot of people are doing different things, and and I'm finding, uh, from the first question, I'm finding that a lot of the youth are they're going after drugs instead of going after help. They're not going to school. They're, they're not communicating with their parents. They're they're walking away from the help and they walk into drugs. And, and and we're not we gotta take ownership because we really have having dead justice to that generation. And uh, we see them seeking after a lot of things, but they're not seeking after Christ. And and we're seeing a lot of people run up against the first obstacle taken off and you know in marriage you're not always going to get to it every day is not going to be rosy every day is not going to be like it was before you say I do I, it, it, it's good that you say I do but there's something that spiritually changes after you say I do and it's not so much about having your name on a certificate. It's about when you did it, you did it before God. And you did it in witnesses with your friends and your family. And now you made a commitment to the Lord that I'm going to stay with this person. That's what the symbolicness of the ring. It's a circle. And, 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 and but, but yet it's still this day and age. We got people saying, well, you know, he looked at me wrong. He said something wrong. He didn't buy me a dress. He didn't buy me a car. She didn't, she didn't hug me. She, she wasn't intimate with me. So I'm going to go somewhere else. The devil is a lie. Stay in there. Too easy to give up nowadays. You go to work, you get six figures, and, 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 and your supervisor tells you, you gotta have this report and you get through that report and next day you know you get cold, come to work the next day talking about oh I quit because they can challenge you yeah I quit what is going on with this world 10 years old talking about I need an iPhone that's the devil you need an education you need no iPhone I am your iPhone. Who you want to call? Call. I, I need to know who they are before you do. Uh, then, friend, don't, 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 don't do it. Don't, don't go to your room because I'll pull the door off that room. I'll pull the door off. You want it? Don't, don't do it. Just and we got to watch TV. And we watch TV downstairs. You don't need no TV in your room. I don't have a TV in my room. I barely have one myself. Lord have mercy, what is going on? But my brothers and sisters, why am I saying all that? Because we've allowed the world to control the environment of the church. The essence of the church 
We flip the script the wrong way. And we need to make an impact. Some way, somehow. So we gotta chase God. We gotta yes. chase him. You gotta chase him. You gotta trace him and you gotta trust him when you can't even trace him. You gotta trust God. So to those that are hearing me virtual, you can still be a member of this church. Membership at rccca.org. Send your prayer, membership. We would love to have you. Amen. And I told you, when the Lord says that you're going to be a member of this other church, God's going to give you permission to get to that to that state and minister to you. Amen. And you'll be a part. And I'm praying that we're not comfortable with these seats or not filled. And even when they are filled, we're going to have to make sure that we do some things. Even though we fill the church, you can have the church filled and still have a disease. So you don't get caught up in having a mega ministry when you're not ministering at all. Right. So to, even though you may not have all the church, uh, all the seats filled, it's one thing. But you can have all the all the chairs filled and still have a problem. So you can't get comfortable because the more they come, the more work you got to do. So don't get don't don't get too busy out there because when the flow comes, when the, when 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 the, when, the, when the harvest comes, the work begins. So I praise God that everyone is saved. Amen. Give God praise for your salvation. Knowing that we'll see each other again. And I pray, as the Matthew says, find somewhere, feed the hungry, clothe them. If they if they thirsty, give something to drink. If they're sick, go to the hospital, visit. If they're in prison, go visit. If you do those things, you've done that to Jesus. And if you go all the way down to the end of Matthew 25, if you don't, Jesus said that you will have eternal damnation. And the righteous will have eternal life. I didn't record it. It was written in blood. It was Jesus. So you got to find your lane and be in. But we pray, God, for that. If anybody needs some prayer, request for prayer, you can come forward. Amen. Because the scripture says, for two or three coming together, touching and agreeing on the same thing, they'll be in the midst. Sometimes what we have to do is we got we to gotta put legs to our prayers. I'm, I'm after something. God said, okay, God, don't get it. What you waiting for? Go get it. Go get it. God bless you. May have a smile upon you. You may be seated.